Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today, we are going to be discussing and reviewing the final ICHGCP E6 R2 changes that impact sponsors and CROs. So I look forward to spending the next two hours with you. I am going to be your trainer today. And we have a lot of Marys and a, and a Mickey and a Jama on the call, but for those of you who are also in the room with uh, the other attendees, welcome the session. First, I want to just tell you just a little bit about me. I am a nurse, but I've been in the research industry for about 30 years. I, I started out as a study coordinator, and my areas of specialty are pretty much pulmonary and cardiovascular, but I have done oncology and bone marrow transplant and a lot of other different therapeutic areas. Too. Um, I've worked as a CRA. I still work as a CRA. I love CRA work, and I've been referred to as someone that is just a CRA at heart. I um, have done a good bit of GCP auditing, and um, I've presented both here in the U.S. at conferences and internationally. One of the things that, that I um, am, I guess, the proudest of is a trial that I managed, a really large trial that had 17,000 patients, 1,200 sites, and we employed the quality by design aspect before quality by design was really coming into vogue. And it, it really served us quite well and was quite an eye-opener for me. I also work uh, a great deal in the risk-based quality uh, management side. So I'm, I'm on an international work group. I work as a trainer, and I've helped write a lot of documents that are helping to shape and mold what we do these days. So that's just a little bit uh, about me. I told the group yesterday we had another webinar, not to count on your fingers how old you think I am. I have been around for just a little while. So today we are going to be discussing quite a few things, and I'm going to review the learning objectives with you. In just a minute, I'm going to get a, a quick check of what your roles are. And then we'll be going through a targeted review of the addendum and how that impacts you as a sponsor or as a CRO. Um, the information will be taken from the guideline directly, and we'll be talking about the precise and prescriptive nature of those changes in our time. We're going to look at some of your next steps that you should take and incorporate so that you can be successful in implementing the changes within your organization. We'll have some little quiz or our key learning activities along the way, and then we'll summarize the course. Throughout the course, I will stop and ask you if you have any questions, and um, if you would just type those in the chat box, we will make sure that, that they get answered. So our learning objectives for today will be to identify three changes that impact sponsors and CROs and individual roles within those organizations. We will also talk about the impact of these revisions on clinical trial conduct and organizational practices, and then we'll discuss some opportunities for implementing the revised guideline and just talk about some things that you should be thinking about as you work through that. So if you would, just enter in uh, chat, the chat box where you work, and if there are people in your conference room or in your room with you, if you would just also enter some information about them. And um, if you would just put a green check if you are already working on your revisions to your operational policies and procedures since the guideline has been finalized. I'll give you guys a minute or two to do that. Okay, I think just about everybody has responded. So we have lots of Marys today on the So we have a participation from monitoring, participation from quality. We have participation uh, from ClinOps. And the majority of you, it looks like you have already started making your modifications, so that is wonderful. Hopefully we will be giving you some very good information as we move forward and maybe some additional things um, to think about. So to just provide you with a little bit of background 
um, some of the drivers for the addendum changes. Um, there were a lot of voiced concerns over quality from regulators, and that included all of the regulatory agencies that are involved in making this re revision. And they included a lack of trust for uh, the ICHGCP statements that are made in NDAs. They included a lack of trust uh, regarding audits. There was some upset over the lack of just clear honesty and transparency. The regulatory agencies wanted there to be defined quality, and we will be talking about how this, these changes impact that um, shortly. And they wanted sponsors, CROs, people who are doing these trials to use a quality by design approach, not by chance, but by design. Thank you.